grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We sing the hymn, Lord Jesus Christ, you have come to us. Lord Jesus Christ, you have come to us, you us from all their sin, pouring your love and goodness in. Jesus, our love for you we sing, living Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, now and every day teach us how to Son of God, you have commanded us to do this in remembrance, Lord, of you. Into our lives your power breaks through, living Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you to us, born as one of us, Mary's son, led out to die on Calvary, risen from death to set us free, living Lord Jesus, help us see you. Christ, I would come to you, live my life for you, Son of God. All your commands I know are true, your many gifts will make me new. Into my life your power breaks through, Living Lord. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out of darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image, to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song 
will we praise our God? And so we sing canticle number one, the Jubilate. Sing joyful praise, let's unto the Lord, let all the earth rejoice. Enter his presence, come with a song, sing praises to the Lord. God made us all by his great love, his sheep and flock we are. God poured his grace free on us, sing praises to the Lord. Sing joyful praises unto the Lord, let all the earth rejoice. Enter his presence, come with a song, sing praises to the Lord. Enter his great gates with thankful hearts, enter his courts with praise. Steadfast his love forevermore, his faithfulness is sure. Glory to the Father be, glory to the Son. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us your gift of faith, that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to that which is before, we may run the way of your commandments and win the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. first reading is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 2. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground the Lord formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for the man there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man and he slept. Then he took one of the, his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one was taken. Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Pharisees came, and to test Jesus, they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house the disciples asked him again about this matter. Jesus said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. 
And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I guess there are times when we've all felt alone. Fear of being alone is nothing new. In fact, one of the first things that is ever said to be not good in the Bible is being alone. We've just heard the end of the second creation story from Genesis. Genesis chapter 2. The opening line from verse 18 reads, The Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. And so in this version of the creation story, which is very different from the first version that makes up Genesis 1, where humanity is created right at the end of the chain, here God sets about making all sorts of creatures to serve as man's partner. If the goal is to remedy the less than desirable situation that man is alone, it's only fitting then that God would make a counterpart. Someone who closely resembles, but is not a clone of the original. Traditionally, of course, this has been the basis for marriage between a man and a woman. Men and women are alike, but they're not clones of one another. However, with all the changes to the marriage regulations in our modern age, it's equally applicable, I guess, to marriages of two women or two men. Beyond marriage, however, the reality of what God is doing here in Genesis 2 is establishing relationships as the norm for human life. It's not good for us to be alone. We can't be alone. We live in relationship. And one need not be married to have deep relationships that fulfil God's desire that a person should not be alone. These bonds can be found in one's family. Brothers, sisters, aunts, cousins. Or, of course, in one's circle of friends and acquaintances. No matter where these relationships are formed, their end is to rectify that original need for one another. It's not good that the man or the woman should be alone. There's a deep human need to love and to be loved, which I would argue is part of our being created in the image of God. And that's the reason, surely, that Jesus in our Gospel reading takes a very firm stance on not giving up on marriage easily. The Pharisees were told are trying to trick Jesus into heresy as they ask him about divorce. And Jesus is very quick with a straight-to-the-point type of answer. Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. Or to paraphrase, Moses gave you this law because you are so heartless. In other words, divorce becomes an option because human beings continually fail at relationships. It was true in Jesus' time, it remains true today. Relationships break down. And Jesus isn't denying that. That's important to recognise. What he's opposing, however, is the right of one person in the relationship, in this case, of course, in Jewish law, the man, 
to decide to dismiss his wife. Write her a note of dismissal merely because it pleases him to do so, which is what Moses permitted. It's not good to be alone. The foundation of healthy human lives is healthy and loving human relationships. And of course, in the reading, Jesus brings children into that equation as well, values them as complete human beings, not just as human beings in the making. It's our responsibility as Christians to encourage and support those relationships, but also to have compassion on those who fail. It's not good to be alone. And so let us affirm our shared faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in God the Son? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated on the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the power of the Spirit, and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, for you have created the world and all that is in it, out of your love and for your love. You offer us a relationship with you, through your creation and through each other. Teach us, Lord, to care for your world and to respect all peoples. Lord, we give you thanks and praise for the beauty of the earth and the wonders of each creature. Lord, help us to have a reverence and awe for all that you have made. Let us learn good stewardship of the gifts and the world that you have given to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise you for the diversity of life on our planet, for the balance of nature and the goodness of the earth. We ask your blessing on areas and creatures that are endangered, Lord, guide the decisions of all who influence the future of the earth. We pray for all who wield power in our world. That a care from, for the environment may be at, in their hearts and in all their plans. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we give you thanks for all who have shown us love and care. We remember before you our families and friends, our loved ones. And we ask your blessing upon all who feel lonely or neglected, and all whose relationships are breaking down. We pray for any who have lost a loved one this week, or who have been deserted, by someone dear to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we rejoice in life, we ask for your blessing upon all who make discoveries that deeply influence our lives, especially discoveries in the medical sphere. 
We remember all who are struggling. We ask your comfort, Lord, to all those who are ill in body, mind or spirit. All who are struggling or finding life difficult at the moment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we give thanks for the mystery of our own life and that you are with us always. And we ask your blessing upon all those who have departed from us, praying that they may rejoice in the glory of your presence in your kingdom. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And let us offer ourselves afresh in the service of Christ, as we say together, Eternal God and Father, you create us by your power and redeem us by your love. Guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves in love and service to one another and to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We sing the hymn, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Love divine, all love's excelling, joy of heaven to earth come down. Fix in us thy humble dwelling, all thy faithful mercies crown. Jesus, Two. Mm -hmm. 
Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord in the name of Christ.